Hello Divi Nation and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create five Divi button module designs and also show you how to create them. This is the final design we are aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new, and then we're just going to call this page five buttons. Click on use Divi Builder, and then we're going to go straight to the Visual Builder. So here, what you want to do is to start to build this from scratch. So I'm going to click on build from scratch, and then I'm just going to choose one column. And in there, we want to add our first button design. So I'm going to choose my button module. Now for the button text, you can add whatever text you want in there. So I'm just going to uh, add get started. But of course, you can add whatever test text that you need in there. Now over here, it's important that you also add your button URL. So this is where the button will link to once you have finished your design. So in this case, I'm just going to add a pound sign. Now this will just go to a default blank page. Right. So now with that set, the next stage now is to customize it. So I'm going to come over here to design. And then we're going to come over here to button and then activate use custom styles for button because this is what allows us to go and customize this button. So I'm going to choose yes. And now you can see that we have all these options for the button. So we're going to start off with the text color. So I'm going to set this to white. So I'm just going to select it from here. But if your color is not here on the color palette, all you need to do is to click on this eyedropper tool and then you'll be able to add your color manually. Okay, so moving on, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add our button background color. So I'm going to come over here, click this plus button, and then I'm going to paste my color in here. Now, if you want to use the same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the description below. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to go next to our border width and set it to zero pixels. So over here, it's set to two by default, so we're just going to set zero on there. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to add our button letter spacing. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll down here. And then by default, it's set to zero. So I'm just going to add 0 0.2. And this needs to be EM. So I'm just going to add that in there. So for the font style, let's uh, set it to uppercase. So I'm just going to scroll down again, set it to uppercase. And then we're also going to underline it. Right, so further down here, we have the underline style. So I'm going to change this to double. Next, we're going to go to the icon color. So over here for the icon color, we're going to set it to, in fact, I'm going to click this eyedropper tool and paste my value in here. So now when I mouse over this, you can see my color is now showing over there. Right, so uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, to set our button icon placement to the left. So I'm just going to set it here like that. So now when I mouse over the, the hover state, it's going to be showing over here on the left. Right. So the next stage now is to add some spacing. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and add a custom padding of 40 pixels to the left and 20 pixels to the right. Now it's time to add our box shadow. So I'm going to come over here on the drop down and choose this option. Right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to set our box shadow horizontal position to 24. Next, our vertical position needs to be set to zero. And then finally, we're going to add our color. So I'm going to come over here on this eyedropper tool, just drag the slider all the way up because by default, it's set to transparent. So I'm just going to paste my color in here. So now we can see we're starting to build a style to our button. So what we need to do next is to add our icon. So I'm just going to scroll back up here to our button and then we're going to choose our icon. So the icon I'm going to go with is this one right here. So I'm just going to select it. So now when I mouse over, you can see here that we have this beautiful design. So what you can also do here is you can either leave that, uh, leave that uh, little arrow and uh, so that it shows when you hover. But if you don't want to do that, you can always come here and select only show icon on hover for button and then set this to no. So by default, it's, on a, it's always going to be like that. And also, if you want to uh, make your text bold, you can always come over here and change the font weight like that. All right, so that's our final design. Let's move on to the next one. So I'm going to save, and then we're going to move on to our next design. So to do that, we're just going to create a brand new section. So I'm going to click this plus button. It's going to be a regular section and single column. And we, like we did before, we're going to add a button. 
Right, so I'm just going to leave this text as it is, as default. But uh, of course, you can just follow what I mentioned in the previous video about adding your link and also changing the text. Right, so let's move over here to the design tab and let's start by making our customizations to our button. So I'm going to come over here to button and then activate use custom styles for button. Right, now with that selected, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add our button text color. And as I mentioned before, if you want to use the same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the description below. Right, so I'm going to come over here, click the eyedropper tool and paste my color. Next, we're going to go to our button background color, but this time we're going to add a gradient. So I'm going to click on the second tab here, click the plus button, and I'm going to add my first color. Now, my first color is going to be a transparent color. So I'm just going to drag this right slider down so that we, we get our RGBA values. And then what you want to do is between these brackets, you want to add your value. So as you can see, things have changed over here on the button. And then the next thing we're going to do is to add our second color. So I'm going to click here. Now, this one here is going to be a normal solid color. So I'm just going to paste it like that. Next, we're going to come over here to our gradient direction and make sure that it's set at 180 degrees. And then for our start position, this needs to be set at 96. And the end position needs to be set at zero. Right, so the next stage now is to set our button border width. So here, by default, it's set at two. So we want this to be set to 10 pixels. And then for our button border color, I'm just going to click here on this eyedropper tool. Now this color, again, is going to be a transparent color. So I'm just going to drag the slider down a little bit. And then I'm just going to paste my values in here, just like that. And then over here for the button, for the button border radius, I'm going to set this to zero. And for the letter spacing, I'm going to set this to six. Now let's add our font. So over here, it's set to default. So I'm going to change this and search for a font called XO2. I'm going to select it and I'm going to set the font weight to bold. Right, so moving on. So this is where you can get to play around with different uh, ways you want your font to look. So you can make it all caps or you can make it um, small caps. So I'm just going to go with small caps for this design. And then next, we're going to go and choose our button icon. So for this example, I'm going to go and use this arrow. And then moving on, uh, only show icon on hover for button. We're going to set this to no so that we always see this arrow. Great. So uh, the next thing we're going to do now is we are going to set our custom padding. So I'm going to scroll down over here, click on spacing. So for our custom padding bottom, I'm going to set this to zero. Now it's time to choose our box shadow. So I'm going to come over here to box shadow and I'm going to select this one. So let's start with our horizontal position. So this needs to be set at minus 15. Vertical position needs to be set at 15. And the spread strength needs to be set to minus 13. We're also going to add our shadow color. So I'm going to come over here and paste our shadow color. Right, so our design is almost complete. So let's see what happens here when we hover. So you can see here that this is working fine. Now, we also have this uh, color here in the background. So what you may need to do is to go in and add a white uh, background so that uh, we don't get this color over here. But of course, if you want to keep this, you can always keep it as it is. So I'm going to come back over here to the button and then I'm going to select background color and then I'm going to add my color here as white. And now you can see that when I mouse over this area, I don't have that color. But of course, it's up to you. OK, so this design is done. Let's move on to the next one. So I'm going to save. OK, so let's continue by creating a new section. So I'm going to click this plus button, add my regular section. And as we did before, we're just going to choose this single column and select our button module. Right. So for this here, for this button text, I'm going to add learn more. But of course, as I mentioned before, you can add whatever text you want on there. So let's start off by coming over here to design, clicking on button and then activating the custom styles. Right. So now with that selected, our text color needs to be set to white. And then for our button background color, I'm going to add a gradient to this. So I'm going to click the second tab here, click the plus button and then add my first color. So I'm going to paste my first color here, just like that. And then I'm going to add my second color. Next, we need to come over here to our gradient direction and set this to 90 degrees and also make sure that this is set to linear. Next, we need to uh, set our button border width. So I'm going to set this to zero. And then next, we are going to set our button border radius. 
currently it's set to a 3, so we need to set this to 10. And for our letter spacing, this needs to be 1. And for our button font, now this is where you can get creative and choose a font that works with your design. But in this case, I'm going to use a font called Source Sans Pro. So I'm going to click here on default and search for my font. I'm going to select it. And for the font weight, let's make this bold. And then finally, on the font here, we're going to make it all uppercase. Okay, so now it's time to add our icon. So I'm going to scroll down here and select my icon. And uh, I'm going to set my icon color to white. Next, let's set our custom padding. So I'm going to scroll down here and go to spacing. So for our custom padding, for the left, we're going to set it to 1 EM. And for the right, we're going to set this to uh, 2.5 EM. Next, we're going to add our box shadow. So I'm going to select my box shadow and I'm going to go with this design here. Now for the uh, horizontal direction or horizontal position, I'm going to set this to minus 35. And for the vertical, I'm going to set this to zero. And then let's go ahead and add our shadow color. So I'm going to come over here, click this eyedropper tool. And um, I'm just going to drag the slider all the way up and then paste my value like that. So now we can see we have a little design going on here, which is great. Okay, so the next step now is to go into the advanced settings and add our CSS snippet. Right, so I'm going to go over here to advanced custom CSS, and we need to go into after. Now, this CSS snippet that I'm going to use in this design is going to be in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So I'm just going to paste it here. So the reason why we're using this CSS snippet is because when we hover, we can see that our icon here uh, needs to be positioned correctly in this area here. So notice that when I changed my um, my position. So let's right now it's set at 2%. Let's say I add 8%. So if I mouse over here, you can see that it's not in position. So I'm just going to leave this at 2%. Okay. So finally, what we can do is we can add our hover state. So to add our hover state, I'm going to go to the custom padding. So I'm going to go back over here to my custom styles for button. Okay. So this now allows us to add our values for the hover state. So I'm going to select my hover over here and then I want to add 4 EM to the right. So you can see here on the hover state that the size is actually changing. So this is how you can do a quick preview of how your hover state looks like. Okay, so pretty much this is our final design. Let's go ahead now and save. Right, so let's create a brand new section. So I'm going to click this plus button regular and single column. And I'm going to select my button module. Okay, so for the button text here, I'm just going to set this to say go. Next, I'm going to come over here to design click on button and then use custom styles for button. So over here for the background color, this time we're going to do something different. So I'm going to come over here to the third, third tab, click this plus button and add an image. So my image is already in my downloads folder. So I'm just going to navigate to my downloads folder and select it. Now, if you want to use the exact same logo, you can go to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below, and then just right click on the image and save it to your computer. All right, so now that I have it uploaded, I'm just going to click on upload an image and now we can see it in there. Next, we're going to come over here to background image size and change this from cover to actual size, making sure it's center and also it's not repeating. So next, we want our size to be the exact dimensions of our circle image. So what we need to do to, do, to achieve that is to go to the advanced tab and add some CSS code. So I'm going to come over here to advanced, click on custom CSS, and this needs to go in the main element. So I'm just going to paste my CSS snippet in here. And you can see just by entering that, now this is the right size. So to complete the design, we need to go back over here to the design tab, click on button. So we're going to start with the button text color. So I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool, drag this slider down, and then I'm going to paste my color in here. Now, notice that this color here is a transparent color, so it hides everything um, as the main color. So the next thing we're going to do now is to add the button text color on hover, and we're going to set this to white. So I'm going to come over here and click this um, arrow, and then select hover. And then over here, I just need to make sure that this is set to white. Next, we're going to come over here to our background color. I'm going to add my color in here by pasting the value. And then I'm going to add my hover color. And again, I'm going to paste it like that. Next, we're going to come over here to the button border width and set this to zero and button border radius to 50%. 
So as you can see, just by entering that 50%, now we have a perfect circle. Okay, so let's move on to the button font. So right now it's set to default. We're gonna set this to poppins. We're gonna make it bold, uppercase, and then show button on icon. We're gonna set this to no. And then we're gonna go to our custom padding and set this to zero to the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna activate this chain and add my value over here. So now it's gonna be applied both to the top and bottom. And now we can see that our word here, go, has been centered. The next stage now is to add our box shadow. So I'm gonna come over here to box shadow and sets and choose my uh, box shadow. I'm gonna go with this one right here. So for the vertical position, I'm gonna set this to zero. And then for the shadow color, I'm just gonna click this eyedropper tool and paste my color between the brackets. And then we might as well set our hover color. So I'm gonna click this little icon here, make sure hover is selected. And then I'm gonna click the eyedropper tool again, paste my hover color. So you can see here when I switch between these two states, this is a really cool effect. Okay, so moving on, it's time now to design our final design. So I'm gonna click here on save, add my new section, single column, and select my button. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just gonna leave this here as click here. Next, we're gonna come over here to design and this time we're gonna align our button to the center and then click on button and then select use custom styles for button. Okay, now with that selected, the next thing we're gonna do is to set our text size to 18 and then we're gonna set our text color to white. Over here for the button background color, I'm gonna click this plus button. In fact, I need a gradient for this. So I'm gonna select, select my second tab, click this plus button, add my first color, and then add my second color. Now this time our gradient type is gonna be set to radial. And then over here for the uh, radial direction, this needs to be centered. It's very important that it's centered. And then for our end position, this needs to be set to 75%. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna set our button border width. So currently it's set at two, so this needs to be set to zero because we don't want any border width on this button. And then for the border radius, we're gonna set this to 100. Next, we're gonna add our letter spacing. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set our letter spacing to four pixels. And then on the hover, we're gonna set it to five. So I'm gonna click this little arrow here, click on the hover tab and set this to five. So we can see here that when I flip between these two states, the button is expanding. Okay, so moving on, uh, let's go ahead now and set our font. So we need our font here to be ultra bold. So I'm gonna select ultra bold here for my font and then we're gonna make it italist and all caps. Next, we're gonna choose our icon. So I'm gonna select this one here. The next stage now is to add our custom padding. So I'm gonna scroll down here, choose spacing. And for our custom padding, I'm gonna set it to 20 pixels, both to the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna activate my chain so that when I add my value here, it's gonna be automatically added to the bottom. And then over here to the right, I wanna set my left margin to 30 pixels and then the right margin to 50 pixels. Right, it's time now to add our box shadow. So I'm gonna come over here to box shadow and choose my box shadow. So I'm gonna go with this one here and then I'm going to set my positioning. So for the vertical position, I'm gonna make sure that this is set to zero. Now over here for the blur strength, this needs to be set to 64. And for the hover state, yeah, I'm gonna set this to 100. So I'm gonna click this little icon here, click on hover and then set this to 100. So as I flip between these two states, you can see that the intensity is a bit different. Now let's move on to the spread strength. So over here, I'm gonna set it to minus 12. And then for the shadow color, I'm just gonna click this eyedropper tool and paste my value between the brackets, just like that. So to always show our icon here, uh, I'm gonna scroll down here until I find only show icon on hover. So I'm gonna set this to no. So now you can see that it's always gonna be shown. But of course, this is something that you can add if you really want it to look like this. But otherwise you can just keep it to that and then the arrow is shown when you mouse over this area. Okay, so these are five designs. So I'm just gonna save my design here and save and exit.
So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. And if you have any questions regarding this tutorial, please leave your questions in the comments box below. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.